You're listening to Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari, where NFL legends live on. Back to you, boys. It's him. He's alive. And now joining us here on Thursday night, tailgate is former Steelers wide receiver Will Blackwell. Let me give you some background on Will. He's from Texarkana, Texas, played his college ball at San Diego State, where he was named the Western Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year in 1994 and first team Western Athletic Conference in 1995 and 96. Over those two seasons, he combined for over 2,200 yards receiving and 19 touchdowns, helped San Diego State to -to back-to-back eight-win seasons. He was a second-round draft pick in 1997 by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he played in the league from 97 to 2001, all in Pittsburgh. Over that time, he had almost 2,700 all-purpose yards. He scored four touchdowns, including two kickoff returns, and we're excited that he is with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Will, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Will. How you doing? Oh, we're fantastic. Thank you, Will. Will, I, I want to start our time with you tonight. By going back to your time at San Diego State, and curious, how, how does a kid from Texarkana, Texas, wind up playing his college ball at San Diego State? Well, you know, I was born in Texarkana. I lived there till I was 11 years old, and then I moved to Oakland. So I was raised in Oakland. I went to Skyline High School, and at the time, you know, I was a highly recruited athlete then. I wanted to play where they were throwing the ball the most. And San Diego State and Colorado on the West Coast at that time were throwing the ball the most. Uh, USC was trying to do a little bit, but they had a coaching change in the recruiting process, and then they went a different direction. And so I had some struggles to begin with the SAT with, um, you know, I didn't know how to take it. The first time I had ever taken a test that says, only answer what you know. And so finally I learned how to take the test. I passed. Well, San Diego State was there no matter what. At that time, they still had Prop 48. So if I didn't pass the test, they were still going to accept me there. But I passed the test, and so I was there. Uh, Sean Payton is who recruited me to San Diego State. Uh, Al Lugamil was a coach at the time. As I redshirted, those guys were fired. So I had maybe about four or five months with those. Uh, great receiver coach, Curtis Johnson, who's with uh, Saints right now, was um, my receiver coach then. And so from there – uh, they left, and then came Ted Tolner, Ted Tolner and Tom Kraft, Tom Kraft's offensive coordinator. Uh, he was someone who played, I think, under Eric Coriel back in the day at San Diego State, and they wanted to put the ball in the air. Uh, Coach Kraft had saw me play in the North-South Shrine game. Uh, when I was coming out of high school, I got MVP of that high school game, and he told me when I first met them, he said, we're going to do a lot of things like you did in that All-Star game. Are you ready to catch a lot of passes? And I was like, he knows who I am. <laughs> He's like, I said, yeah. And so, you know, a lot went on. I, you know, I strained some hamstrings and coming up, you know, through red shirt and learning, you know, through spring ball, you know, getting ready to play college ball. Got into it. And, you know, freshman of the year, I didn't even know I had 51 catches at that time. I was just playing as hard as I could. I came from Skyline where we tackled every day. Uh, Coach John Beam, who's, legendary coach in Oakland has put a lot of players uh, in the college and a lot of pro players. He always had us, you know, we were tough in high school. And so I got tackled every day in practice during uh, the redshirt year. And that's when I knew I really could play is because we were playing against the starters. And every day to me was a game. And if I could whoop them, I know I'm going to get the other guys when I get a chance. And so I was happy, you know, my the luck for me, I say, you know, the blessing for me was that when the coaches got fired, all of the plays, everybody starts from ground level. So you go there when the coach has been there five, six, seven years, these players that are there have had those same plays for three, four, five years before you. So they're just reacting. You're thinking. But when the new coach came with the new playbook, uh, we're all at the bottom. And I um, I took advantage of that. And I'm, you know, blessed to play at San Diego State and have the – career I had there, you know, you always go back. Most athletes will always tell you, man, I still wish I would have caught that one or I should have did this or should have did that. And, uh, you know, you always have those and trying to cope with those through life is uh, something. That's a, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> and, and, Will, looking at the team that you had when you were there, you had Oz Akeem at the other wide receiver mm-hmm. position. You guys both had over 1,000 yards receiving in 1995. You had George Jones at running back. He rushed for over 1,800 yards in 95. Talk about partnering up with those guys on offense. 
And I, I don't want to leave out Billy Blanton. Um, he had over 30, uh, 300 yards passing, which at the first time in NCAA history that you had two 1,000-yard rushes and 1,800-yard ru- two thousand yard receivers and one 1,800-yard rusher with a passer that done that. So we were first in NCAA history to do that. I love that Oz came to San Diego State. We both played. I was a redshirt freshman. He played as a true freshman, and he came in. You know, we're not the same size, but he has a lot of quickness, a lot of agility that I always was taught uh, taught that you see somebody doing something good, you try to steal some of their moves. So I was happy that he came, and it, it made it um, – I don't want to say it was easy, but it definitely made it where I wasn't able to be doubled and he couldn't be doubled because of what we did together. And so in practice, you know, it was a battle from the DBs of which one they, you know, they battling to, to go against us in one on one. It's my turn today. And, you know, same result. You know, I, I love and I still talk to him to this day. You know, it's White House for Life. That's our, our group from San Diego State. He was just a phenomenal athlete. And I learned that he had a lot of the same background I had. You know, we played baseball, football, basketball. He ran track. I did some triple jump, you know, um, mothers and, you know, having a good family behind us, raising us. Although my, my father was in Texarkana, and then um, my mom moved us to Oakland. Oz had his uh, father in his life, for, you know, for, you know, how he had him. He had his mom, strong family around him, brothers and uncles, a lot of I don't want to say makes your family, but family really pulling together to make sure that we are on being supported and doing the right thing. And that's how we got there to begin with. So, you know, some strong people behind us, making sure that kids that are growing up in the inner city were able to capitalize on the talents and time that they're putting into us and learning these skills and making sure they were good people. And so I, as a team, I, I, you know, I, I, I talked to him, it was about two days ago. Um, he was coaching at Riverside, uh, JC. And they had a real good season this year. I think they may have came in fourth in the in the state in the junior college. He was coaching with Coach Kraft along with um, one of the other guys that was in. So we had a heck of a class that came in at San Diego State. So Oz was a true freshman, but in my class was Ephraim Salam, played over 13 years in the NFL. Kyle Turley, six six pick overall in the '98 draft. Um, uh, Nate Jaquette. Got drafted the same year as me, a fifth round draft pick. Ricky Parker, you know, we had um, a lot of talent at that school. They had a, Lugan did a good job of recruiting. Coach Tolner and Coach Kraft came in and really utilized the talent. We, again, they went from I redshirted. We were six and six with Marshall Falk and Darnay Scott. We're all there. Those are all friends of mine still to this day. But we came after them with different coaches, and and it really turned around. Those coaches really knew what they were doing. Not to say that the other coaches didn't but they were utilizing us in different ways. And Oz had just, you know, great ability. He played quarterback like I did, and he played quarterback in high school as a starter. I was the backup. I played quarterback as a Pop Warner quarterback all the way through in high school backup. So we had a lot of the different, a lot of the same experiences. And so it was real good to be on a team with um, great talent, you know, being able to say, I can come to practice and get motivated off a, a move that somebody else did. You know, that's enough. You know, I said about Oz. We talk about George Jones, who was maybe the strongest running back I had ever seen for the size that he was. And, you know, he broke all of L.J. Simpson's J. He um, came from Carolina all the way to Bakersfield, J.C., you know, tore up to J.C., came to San Diego State and broke all of Marshall's records. And then I think uh, Penny, one of those guys may have broken George's records now, but he was um, really dedicated to lifting weights and being strong and running track and just, you know, really loved playing football, real strong guy. Uh, Billy Blanton was a guy that I – he was – he's basically just like Drew Brees is how I look at him, same type of guy, toughness, real quick, know where to go with the ball. One of my better quarterbacks, I thought, throughout my experience, because as a receiver – you know where the ball is supposed to go. And Billy always knew where the ball was supposed to go. And, you know, we turn around in its own time. And that's what a receiver wants. When you're catching the ball on time when you're supposed to, never, you know, not throwing interceptions. I'm not, you know, interceptions aren't getting thrown to me when I got two people because the ball's not coming. It's not supposed to. So he did a great job reading uh, the coverage. And, you know, he was player to coming out of high school, out of the modern day. So we had some some talented players, and I'll say the San Diego State, they did a great job of recruiting then, and then we were able to go in and 
really just, you know, try to capitalize and do the best that we could do. And, you know, what's, uh, I look back on it and you have two eight-win seasons and don't get to go to a bowl, oh, that hurts a lot looking back at that. And, Will, you talk about draft class, right? You and George are both picked in the draft to go to the Steelers in 97. What was it like getting to go, you know, to the next level with a guy that you just got to team for a couple of years at San Diego State with? You know, I'll tell this story, and I, and I don't want to um, – upset anybody but this is how it went george and i you know we initially were supposed to have uh, the same agent and he went with some other guys that i had met before but he didn't go with the agent that we were supposed to that i went with i went on had my draft uh situation set up downtown hotel mom dad godparents godmother some of my co-friends there got drafted 53rd pick we go out, party, everything. You know, I'm, I'm not sure where George was at because they were somewhere else with, um, whatever, you know, his the agent that he had at that moment. And I'm at home because uh, myself, George Jones, and Ricky Parker, we all lived together. And so at that time, you know, we, you know, cell phones weren't going like that. The phone is ringing. It had been ringing all morning, draft going on, but I already got drafted. So I'm going to see the rest of the draft later. We've been up late partying and everything. And I was like, man, I'm going to go in here and answer this phone. And when I answered the phone, it was me and Dodette from the Pittsburgh still. Now, if they, don't, if they don't contact you, they don't draft you. The phone been ringing all morning. And I finally went in there, and they said, and she said her name, and I said, it's Will. You guys just drafted me yesterday. She said, Will, we're trying to draft George. Where is he? And then I went and scrammed up and found the number to where these dudes were because, remember, they were trying to court me to be on my representation. Called them up. Bam, George got drafted. So George got drafted in the fifth round. And at that time, you know, he could have been drafted in the third or maybe even the third. They, it was a lot of talk that he was because he ran very well. He was very strong. Uh, he ran, you know, hard when he ran the ball. The phone been ringing, so they could have. He could have been a first day guy. We we really don't know. So that was, you know, so George, my roommate, he gets drafted. We go to Pittsburgh together. My roommate there. So that was a comfort, I would say, because I have a commonality with someone that has been through. You know, I known him for at least two, two and a half years then. And then we're going to the other side of the country, which he is from Carolina. I've been, you know, lived uh, the early part of my life in Texarkana, Texarkana, Arkansas. Different world going to Pittsburgh, coming from California. But having your buddy that you've been through, you know, a lot of, you know, blood, sweat, and tears in college with, it does help a lot. And so we um, got in there and started moving in. He had a decent, uh, a real good rookie year. We both did pretty good our rookie year. We had uh we almost made it to the Super Bowl and it would have been in San Diego and that was, you know, even more money for us if we would have made it. We didn't. Uh we had we lost to Denver and then Denver beat Green Bay in San Diego, then they came back the next year and beat Atlanta and Miami. And I, I say that because Ephraim Salam, who was one of my close friends who went to San Diego State with me, oh he's from Sacramento, but that was my roommate from day one. We stayed up all night talking, found out that we had the same basketball tournaments with each other, know all these people, you know, that we didn't probably walk past each other, didn't even know it. And so he uh, went as pick 199, Mr. Irrelevant, to starting for Atlanta and going to the Super Bowl. They didn't win the Super Bowl, but a hell of a story for a guy that was Mr. Ir Irrelevant, and he goes off to have a 13-year career in the NFL and doing well on TV now. So I just wanted to put him in there also. I, Spoke to, so our, our friends from San Diego State, we still keep in touch with each other. You know, I'm not a guy that's on um, social media like that. I do have LinkedIn, and somebody talked me into Instagram the other day. But we 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 do the texting, and you know, like old folks. I guess we can call ourselves old folks. I don't feel like I'm old, but <laughs> we um we talk on the phone and text each other and stuff. But we're not doing the posting the pictures and stuff, our wives and stuff, do that type of stuff. But love the um, San Diego State days and the experience as you as I talk about it. You know, I could talk you to death on that. It's always a story, believe me. Bob, you got a, uh, a question for Will before we let him go? Yeah, sure. I mean, j while you were in Pittsburgh, Will, I mean, so many great teammates on those teams, and uh, I'll just pick one at random. You know, Jerome Bettis was still playing at a very high level at that time. We hear so mm -hmm. many good things about him as a player and a a human being. Uh, tell us your memories of the bus. Man, the bus is like, that's my extended family. And, you know, I don't talk to him as much as I did then, but I spent at least three Thanksgivings with his family uh, out there. I, I went to his, you know, the debacle that we had uh, in Detroit. We ate 
Thanksgiving at his mom's house before that. Um, so I know, you know, his, his mom and father, and I've, I've been around them, and he was, um, you know, his first year there was like got traded there in 96, so it came at the end of half a season, but then he came back his first full year was my rookie year. And mm-hmm. so we, um, I went into the rookie mini camp after you get drafted, and then I flew to Marshall, and Marshall Falk and I had the same agent at the time, and he was playing for Indianapolis. Marshall has a camp out there where he invites all of the top, running backs throughout, you know, history. You know, I met Thurman Thomas, uh, Marcus Allen, Eric Dickerson, Emmett, just, you know, tons of running backs that are, that are there. Bam, all of a sudden, here comes Jerome. I'm like, hey, man, I'm, I'm on your team, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, that's right, young fellow, you are on my team. And so uh, Jerome, Marshall, and I, we all went out and played golf, and he'll never, he'll never give me credit. That was the one time I beat him. Marshall had got me tightened up. Marshall got me into golf. That's how I first started golfing with uh, Marshall Falk. He introduced it to me. And then so when Jerome was there, we were playing hole by hole, and I got him. I got him that one time. He won't never give me credit, but I got him that one time. Now, <laughs> he probably shooting 78 or 75 or something. Now he's been golfing so long. JB was such a um, – he, he looked out for, uh, you know, not that he's way older than me, but he was older than me. And he really, like, looked out for us and, and, and mm-hmm. came, you know, gave us real stories about what was going on. And he was really the first person I got to really look at as far as, like, you know, he's an enterprise. This is a big-time person right here. But he was so down to earth, like, as real as real could be. I just thank him for that. Another, uh, you know, some of my close friends, Joey Porter and Hines Ward and Deshae Towns, those guys I still talk to, and Bobby Shaw. I still talk to all those guys now. We had – um we were very close time. We did a lot of things together. We all golfed together also. That was that was something that was a reality show in itself. You know, there was a lot of laughter, a lot of a lot of competition. I heard the you know, a guy before me speak about competition. That's what was happening out there on the golf course. Um yeah, so J B great guy. You know, I I got um I was not able to attend him being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but he sent me an invitation, which was a trophy in itself for me to get the trophy. So that was my second invitation to the Hall of Fame. I got one from Marshall also. And, you know, I wasn't able to make either one, but I'm able to talk to those guys and, you know, we, you know, went through that. But JB's invitation goes in my trophy case. The invitation is, is like, it's top of the line. Um, really, really, uh, proud to just be invited to either one of those guys and have, you know, not speaking to him on a daily basis, but to still be in the memory of saying this is somebody that I want to be there for me. And, you know, I was able to talk to him with that, but really, really good. I want to give a shout out real quick to my high school that I coach at right now, McClymouth High School. We back-to-back state champions. Um, yeah, we, we um trying to see if we get three peak. We got a couple of guys going off on scholarship this year and a uh, legendary coach, Michael Peters has put numerous amount of guys into college and I, um we're gonna be pumping some boys out right here. So keep your eyes open for McClimas High School. They uh small school with big football program. Big football program. So I'm well, happy to be uh go ahead. That's great. No, I was just gonna say before before we let you go and I know you talked about your you know you're not much on, on social media but let our listeners know, how can they stay up to date with what you're doing? You can catch Will Blackwell at LinkedIn, at Will Blackwell LinkedIn, or the LinkedIn profile. Look me up. There are some other Will Blackwells, but I'm the Pittsburgh Steeler restorative practice. Um, you can also catch me. What is that? that uh, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have. That's all I got is LinkedIn. I, I stayed away from all the other stuff. There's one thing about being a, you know, when you're, I played football for winning and the thrill of competition. And when, I, when I'm out in public, I don't need everybody on me. I wasn't like that. So I didn't – when I became – you know, I'm a, I'm six feet, about 205 pounds now. I blend into the public real well. And so I enjoy being able to walk past people and people not jumping on me, asking me for autographs while I'm eating, or bringing a nasty shoe off their foot for you to sign it. Sign it. You know, I just – you know, you – I still get fan mail. I, I was, you know, people were surprised though that I do still get fan mail, but I wasn't really big on all of, you know, the attention, and so I didn't really get in that. I love my, I love being, you know, you know, private. The people that I want to know about me, they know about me. But as I go into 
you Google me, you'll see some of the things I've done here. I've done a AAMA, which is African American Male Achievement Initiative that we have in Oakland that's doing this push for our young black boys who are at risk. That has done a lot of great things, and the program is growing. MSNBC did a special on me on that, and um, mostly right now it's been coaching. So, I again, you can reach me on LinkedIn, Will Blackwell, and um, everything from consulting to coaching. And uh, I'm hoping that I can, you know, crack into the co- college coaching. I really hadn't uh, tried as hard, but now I'm looking to push for that. And being that I'm in the high school, been here now, I got a heartbeat for what the young youth, or I should say, the student high school students are on going into college. And that competition bug it still burns heavy in me. So our practices are always live, always live. You really compete hard, and so. Will Blackwell is um, can be reached that way for whatever at your service. You know, I do motivational speaking to children, older <laughs> adults, a little bit of everything. I, I I've been able to. Um, I love MacGyver coming up as a kid. I watched MacGyver. MacGyver could do a whole bunch of stuff, and I've been able to change titles a few times and do a few different things, things I didn't even know I could do. And I'm um, happy with that. Now I want to. Got me a state championship. I, I would love to join into a, a college team and pursue a, a national championship in college. Uh, you know, there you go. Back to a Super Bowl. Well, well, we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night and sharing your stories with us. We hope you'll come back and do it again soon. We we really enjoyed the time. We'd love to catch up. I'm sure there are a lot more stories to tell. Please do. There are millions of stories to tell. I have them all. All right. Sounds good. good. Well, take care. All the best to you and your family. Look forward to catching up with you again real soon. Okay, thank you. Shout out to Steeler Nation. Y'all have a good night. I appreciate it. Take care, Will. Take care, Will. That's former Steelers in San Diego State wide receiver Will Blackwell. We've got our next guest, Keith Hirschland, hanging on the line. We're going to get to Keith on the other side of this quick station ID.